In fact, it's quite a lot stronger now than the Hurricane Gracie was back in 1959. And really, the only hurricane we know about that we think might be as strong or stronger than this one was the one that struck the Sea Islands way back in August of 1893. And that, of course, is one of the worst natural disasters that we've had in this country, second only, I guess, to the Galveston hurricane. Here we see another picture of Hugo, and right now it continues to move toward the northwest. It's moving about 12 miles an hour. We haven't really seen any change in that at all. Now we have some, uh, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like on the satellite motion. We'll show you this satellite picture, and we'll show you what has happened since early this afternoon, and there you can see that eye of the hurricane, a very intense, a very strong hurricane, and the eye moving ever closer to the South Carolina coast. Right now at this hour, the center of the eye is about uh, 120 miles, just about due southeast of Charleston. And we haven't seen really much of anything but a northwest movement. The Hurricane Center is forecasting to turn a bit more to, to the north before it makes landfall, but we have not yet seen the beginning of that turn, if indeed that's going to happen. Now let's look at an action radar. We'll show you the radar out of uh, Charleston as well, and you can see now, no doubt about where the eye is. There, it's right there, and we can put this in motion for you too. Earlier on, you couldn't see the eye, and now you'll notice how it comes onto the picture. In the meantime, we're seeing some pretty heavy rain bands begin to come in all the way from Georgetown down to Charleston, down to Savannah, and even down about to Fernandina Beach. Some of the rain already moving inland. After this hurricane makes landfall, another very problem, it's a serious problem we're going to have after that is rain and the rainfall we think is going to be very heavy. After the hurricane gets inland, we expect it to turn toward the north and move off east of the Appalachian ridges and very, very heavy rains over an area where the ground is already pretty saturated, so that could cause some trouble as well. Let's go ahead and look at the information on the latest advisory from the Hurricane Center. We have an updated position. It's 31.4 north, 78.4 west, and that's about 120 miles to the southeast of Charleston, South Carolina. Top winds in this hurricane are 135 miles an hour sustained, and that makes it a very solid uh, category four on the Saffir Simpson scale. And you might be interested to know that the hurricane at this point is stronger than Hurricane Gilbert was when Hurricane Gilbert hit Jamaica last year, and it's just about as strong as it was when it came through Guadalupe, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. So it's something not to be taken lightly for sure. This is what the wind field looks like. The gale force winds already impinging on the coast in orange. And there we have the hurricane force winds in red and this real small area around the center. That's where the maximum winds are more than 115 miles an hour. Not too windy as we indicated along the coast. We still, still see most of the winds gusting in the range of 20 to 35 miles an hour. But we expect an abrupt change in that now just in the next few hours. There once again you can see the center of the hurricane with strong rain bands already coming on shore. And Precipitation just uh, between now and tomorrow evening, we expect uh, certainly in the range of four to eight inches and uh, where you see the dark green, it could even be stronger than that. This is the warning situation. We have hurricane warnings from Oregon Inlet in North Carolina down to Fernandina Beach in Florida. And to the north of that, we have a hurricane wise that extends all the way up to Cape Hennelpin. So very wide area is affected. The uh, highest probabilities continue to show landfall on the South Carolina coast and storm surge always a major problem with a landfalling hurricane. That's how about 90% of the people who have died in hurricanes have lost their lives. It's been in high water caused by the high tide and we expect that storm surge to be up possibly 17 feet above normal and not only that it looks very much now as if the hurricane is going to come in pretty close to the astronomical high tide. At Charleston the high tide in the morning will be about 2:12 a.m. So that could even add to the effect. You know, if the hurricane comes in on low tide, then up there you would say well, the surge is 10 feet, then the 10 feet is about all the tide you would have. But should it come in on high tide, you would add that to the astronomical tide. And now we're thinking about adding, say, 17 feet to another five or six feet. And that means the tides could be over 20 feet and we could have, uh, we would indeed have a high wave superimposed even on top of that. And with landfalling hurricanes, is always a danger of tornadoes, so we do have a, a tornado watch for portions of South Carolina and North Carolina. That will be in effect at 2 a.m. We're going to continue to bring you very frequent updates on this hurricane here at the Weather Channel, so please do stay tuned for that.